In this 2D momentum example, we actually have three pieces instead of two. So the math is just a little bit different. It's not necessarily harder, but we're just doing uh, M1, M2, M3 instead of just M1 and M2. So what we're looking for here is the final velocity of the third piece that has uh, come off this explosion. So to solve this, we're going to take a look at all the x components and then all the y components. And we'll do a little bit of trigonometry to get to the final answer. In the x direction, um, we'll just have uh, part of d2 and then, of course, part of d3. Um, and then in the y direction, we'll have d1, d2, and d3. It's also really important to note that d1, d2, d3 uh, initial are all equal to zero, which means there is no initial momentum. So instead of having to write out, I mean, we'll write the whole thing out, but just note that when I write m1, d1, plus m2, d2, plus m3, v3, the left side of this equation is actually just equal to zero. So that's equal to, of course, m1, d1 prime, plus m2, v2 prime, plus m3, v3 prime. So we're gonna, that's our base equation we're going to start with, and we're going to move out a little bit from there. So I'm going to start by just looking at what exists in my x direction. So in my x direction, I have no initial momentum, so that's zero, it's equal to. Uh, mass number one has no x component to it. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, it's going to go right to zero. So even if I included it, it wouldn't matter. Uh, mass number two, of course, now does have some sort of valuable component to it. So we know that mass two is 1.5 kilograms, given from the image in the question, times V2 prime, which is 20 meters per second southwest. So um, west is in the negative direction. So that's also important for us to take into account. So it'll be negative 20 meters per second times cos 45. So I've accounted for the negative direction as well as just whatever the x component is. And I have to add m3 v3 primed. So m3, one kilogram. And v3 prime, we don't know. We do know, however, that the x component is simply uh, v3 primed times the cosine of the angle alpha. This is going to allow us to rework um, our equations here and reorganize some stuff. So what I'm left with is 0 equals negative 21.2 kilogram meters per second. So that's the momentum in the x direction of the second particle um, plus 1 times v3 prime cos theta, which is just v3 primed cos theta. And so if I divide my 1 kilograms, um, I guess I'll add the 1 kilograms here just before I divide by it, this leaves me with v3 primed is equal to 21.2 meters per second. And that's not actually v3 prime, sorry. That's going to be v3 prime cosine of alpha. So v3 prime times cos alpha is equal to 21.2 meters per second because I've divided by my one um, kilograms. So this is, um, we're going to call equation one, but just keep in mind that this is v3 x prime. This is important because this will help us when we figure out uh, what kind of trigonometry we're going to need to use to solve for my answer. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my y direction. So again, the initial momentum is zero, but now I do have y components for all three parts, so it's just a little bit more. So I'm left with 0 0.5 kilograms for mass number one times the final velocity of mass 1. It's all in the y direction, so there's no component here. So that's 30 meters per second, plus mass number 2, 1.5 kilograms. Now this, is, again, is in the negative y direction. So it'll be 
times negative 20, and then it's sine 45 meters per second times sine 45. And I'm just going to move the um, V3 component down here plus, oh, sorry, that should be mine, uh, plus one kilogram. However, the V3 component is in the negative y direction, so min minus V3 prime times sine of alpha. I can simplify a little bit here. You end up with 0 equals negative 6.21. So that's the first plus the second uh, momentum, so kilograms, meters per second. Plus, we'll leave the 1 kilogram times negative V3 primed times sine alpha. This means that V3 prime times sine alpha is equal to negative 6.21 meters per second. And make note again that this is actually V3y prime, negative 6.21 meters per second. So let's just recall what I ended up solving for. That was V3 prime times cos alpha, which was just also V3x prime. And that was equal to 21.2 meters per second. We also had V3 prime sine alpha, which is V3y primed. That was equal to negative 6.2 meters per second. If you have the x and the y portion of um, a triangle, well, then you can solve for tan, because we know that tan is opposite over adjacent. So this leads us to get tan theta, or in this case, it's tan alpha. And that's going to be equal to the opposite side, which is the y side, negative 6.2 divided by the adjacent side, which is the x side, 21.2 meters per second. You can solve for alpha, and you're ending up getting 16 degrees. Now that we have that value, we can plug it back into any of the two equations from the top there. So V3 prime times cos alpha, we know is 21.2, which means that V3 prime is equal to 21.2 divided by cosine of 16. And this leaves us with a V3 prime value of 22 meters per second. But of course, include the angle in your final answer. So V3 primed is 22 meters per second. You can take the picture as a hint there. Um, that's going to be, we'll say, east 16 degrees south.